Pizza was invented by the Greeks. Oops, I meant Hawaiian pizza was invented by the Greeks. In 1962, Greek immigrant to Canada, San Panopoulos, in his restaurant in Chatham, Ontario, decided to put the Hawaiian brand pineapple on a pizza. And more and more people started eating it, and it became the global phenomenon that we know today. Those of you who like it, you sicken me. <laughs> I kid, of course. You do you. And there you go. Hawaiian pizza is Greek. Psych! I'm not just saying that Hawaiian pizza is Greek, but rather pizza in general is Greek. First of all, I am glad to say that the very first person to add pineapple on pizza was not a Greek person, but rather someone in 1957 in Oregon. And instead of adding ham, they added papaya and green peppers. However, it's most likely that Hawaiian pizza made its way to the northeastern US and from there to the rest of the globe. And world, I would like to apologize on behalf of all of us with a Greek background. But in this video, I will argue that it's not just Hawaiian pizza that is Greek, but pizza in general. Essentially, pizza is a pizza, and therefore it is Greek. There, I said it. Don't believe me? Stick around until the end of the video to find out. Did you know that the ancient Greeks ate a flatbread called plakundas, topped with olive oil, dill, sometimes vegetables, sometimes onions, nuts, and fruit? And, of course, Cheese! Sometimes they even topped it with honey. Does this concept remind you of something? Pizza, of course. The story of pizza continues through the immigration of ancient Greeks, such as the Corinthians, the Achaei, and the Euboeans in Sicily and southern Italy. Due to their population, or because they were searching for metals, the Greeks made their way to ancient Italy. Not only they colonized those lands, but they also set up polis or city-states brought their own religion, customs, and of course, food practices. This included Greek bread making and the technology of the oven, and yeast fermentation and leavening. The ancient Greeks in Sicily and southern Italy not only set up polis, but they traded and interacted with the various indigenous groups, and in many cases, they intermarried with them, further spreading Greek culture and religion. The polis set up by Greeks were mostly independent and they were powerful enough to be invited to the Olympics. The whole region was so prosperous that it was called Megali Elas or Magna Grecia. Some of the polis or city-states set up by the Greeks were Naxos, Catania, Syracuse, Sibaris and Palepolis. One ancient city near the Greek polis was of course Pompeii, which was also briefly under Greek rule. And in Pompeii, in 2023, we found a fresco of the very first proto-pizza. And the ancient Greeks founded another city, Neapolis. Nea Poli. Napoli, Naples, the birthplace of pizza, was founded by ancient Greeks. We will talk about Naples a bit later in the video, so stay tuned. As late as 300 BC, the Romans were called gruel eaters, and if they ever ate flatbreads, that was rarely. Pliny the Elder believes that the art of bread making was brought in Italy by the Greeks. Pliny also doesn't recall professional bakeries before the Third Macedonian War, and when bakers did start opening up shops in Rome, they were mostly Greek. Why are all these so important? Because according to Associazione Verace Pizza Napolitana, a pizza needs to have yeast. Without the ancient Greeks' love for plakundes, their knowledge of yeast fermentation and their oven technology, pizza would have never been possible. My evidence, though, doesn't stop here. As the great historian Edward Gibbon argued, Naples, which has swelled to a great and populous capital, long cherished the language and manners of a Grecian colony. And indeed, Naples continued having a Greek character and culture up until the 8th century AD, and multiple territories of southern Italy were under Byzantine control for way longer. Today, most of the people from Naples, southern Italy, and Sicily, when they do those DNA tests online, they find out that they're at least 10% Greek, and sometimes they're 30% plus Greek. And 
these figures are coming from 2024 when the Greek lineage has been diluted for 300 years. Still not convinced. The very first mention of the word pizza comes from a document that was written in the 10th century Geta, which belonged to the Byzantine Greeks. Why is this important? According to the Oxford English Dictionary, the word pita is attested for the very first time in 1106. But that doesn't mean that the word didn't exist but it just it wasn't recorded. There is some disagreement about the etymology of the word pita, whether or not it's coming from the word pichti, which means thick dough, or from pisa, which means pitch, or pisa as in the flattened out resin patty. To this day, in the Cypriot dialect, you can say epitosato or ekamatopita to mean I flattened it. In Greek, pita has a triple meaning. Of course, in mainland Greek, it means a round flatbread. In Cypriot Greek, it means an oval flatbread with a pocket. And of course, we use it as a suffix to all the various pies, whether they are savory or sweet. For example, lukanikopita, sausage pie, or portokalopita, orange pie. Indeed, in English, sometimes is referred to as a pizza pie, which, like the moon, it hits your eye and that's amore. <laughs> and the cheeseless version is called the tomato pie. Okay, but what does pizza have to do with pizza? Well, pizza can be considered as what linguists call a phonetic change to the word pizza, of course. This change could have been caused by the interactions with Latin or with indigenous Italian languages. Let me give you a few examples of phonetic changes in the Greek-speaking world. In mainland Greece, the word has is pronounced as echi, as opposed to Cyprus that is pronounced eshi. Same goes for the word for and, ke, which in Cyprus is pronounced je. Care to guess which other word is pronounced differently? Pita, of course. In mainland Greece, where during the 19th and 20th century, there were multiple efforts to clean or civilize the language, now most people cannot pronounce double consonants and therefore they will ask for a pita. Whereas in Cyprus and in a lot of the islands, you could hear people ask for a pita. So, if the same word has two different pronunciations within the Greek-speaking world, couldn't it have yet another pronunciation in what used to be part of the Greek-speaking world? And there you have it. Neapolitans are the descendants of ancient Greeks, who not only brought their DNA to Italy, but also their oven technology and their mastery of fermentation. So, not only genetically, historically, but even linguistically and etymologically, the word pizza comes from pita and therefore is Greek. This video was very fun to make, but I do recognize that pizza is of course Italian. Without the Italian explorers finding the new world, the tomato would never have made it to Europe. And without the Lazzaroni, the Neapolitan poor, being so desperate and hungry that they tried tomatoes before everyone else in Europe, pizza would not have been possible, and therefore pizza is Italian. And if you're going to play the origin game, ancient Greeks did not invent bread making, but they learned it by trading with the ancient Egyptians. And even they were not the first to make bread, but rather it was the Natufians 14,000 years ago who made a version of a flatbread, a pizza. Does that make pizza Natufian? I don't think so. Footies, what did you think about this video? Is pizza Greek? Italian? Maybe American? Let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed watching this video, maybe watch any of these videos here on Italian food. Until the next time. Bye!